Good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu News Analysis by Shankar IAS Academy for the date 2nd July 2019. The list of articles which has been chosen for today's analysis along with the page numbers of Chennai, Bengaluru, Delhi and Thiruvannathapuram editions are provided here. The link for the handwritten notes in the PDF format and the time stamping for the displayed articles is provided in the description box below. And for the benefit of smartphone users, the time stamping is also provided in the comments section. Let's move on to our first article discussion. This article is an editorial which discusses about the education sector of India. The discussion is relevant in prelim syllabus under current events of national and international importance, then in Indian polity and governance, particularly under public policy, then in economic and social development, then the discussion is relevant in main syllabus in GS paper 2 under the area government policies and interventions for development in various sectors. Then in issues relating to development and management of social sector relating to education. Then also in important aspects of accountability. In this editorial, the author discusses about the education sector of India. That is especially about improving the status of teaching profession by providing high wages. So for that, the author takes the example of Bhutan where the Prime Minister has recently announced a new policy which is not yet implemented. The new policy is that the teachers, doctors and other medical staff of Bhutan will earn more than civil servants of the corresponding or comparable grades. Now this new salary scale is expected to benefit about 13,000 teachers and doctors in Bhutan. The author calls this announcement of new policy as a novel move which means a groundbreaking move. This is because no other country has accorded the teachers and doctors in their country with such a pride of place or the most prominent position in its government service. Because the pride of place or the most prominent position are expressed both in terms of remuneration and also in terms of symbolism. Providing more wages than the civil servants is what the author is calling as symbolism here. We saw that the proposal was announced by Bhutan's Prime Minister, who himself is a qualified doctor. So the author says this suggests that professional experience of a higher authority informs the policy. That is, it gives essential quality to the policy framed by the government. Even though we are praising the idea of Bhutan, one question arises here. What is the educational aspect of this policy? Is it possible to demonstrate that improving the status of the teaching profession positively influences the educational outcomes? Is it possible to demonstrate this? For this question, the author gives an example of a study. The study is called as Global Teacher Status Index of 2018. The Global Teacher Status Index is based on in-depth opinion by population in 35 countries, which also includes India. The index explores the attitudes on issues ranging from what is a fair salary for teachers to whether they think pupils or students respect teachers to how highly people rank their own education system etc. There are many international comparisons in education but this is the first time that the role of teacher status has been studied in depth. It also demonstrates a distinct correlation between student outcomes in a country which has been measured by PISA scores and the status that its teachers enjoy. The report of 2018 concluded that the teacher's wages as well as the teacher's status both significantly contribute to the determination of students' performance. Also know that India scored 58 in this study. Here, the PISA is the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Developments, that is OECD's program for international student assessment. It is a triennial international survey, that is, it is conducted every three years, which aims to evaluate the education systems worldwide. It is done by testing the skills and knowledge of 15-year-old students who are nearing the end of their compulsory education. It measures and compares student ability in reading, mathematics, science and global competence and also in financial literacy. Based on this study, the PISA ranks the educational systems of countries. But know that so far India is not a participant in this study. So India is not ranked in PISA, but it is included in the Global Teacher Status Index of 2018. So don't confuse. So now if we look in the context of India, 
India currently spends about 3% of its GDP on education and it accounts for about 10% of the centers and states budgetary expenses. In this expense, salaries constitute a large portion. If you see, in the last year, Niti Aayog in its report named as Strategy for New India at 75 recommended that government spending on education as a whole, uh, not just on school education but as a whole should be increased to at least 6% of GDP by 2022. Then the author mentions about a World Bank study which is named as What Teachers Believe Mental Models About Accountability, Absenteeism and Student Learning. This study found that teacher absenteeism in India was nearly 24%. In India, about 1 in 4 teachers were absent on a typical day which reached as high as 1 in 2 teachers absent in the poorest performing state. Now, this high absenteeism contributes to about 2 thirds of total instructional time which is not being used in several countries. It also means that there is a significant fiscal or financial wastage as salaries are being paid despite unauthorized teacher absence. And this absenteeism costs our country about 1.5 billion dollars annually. The author says this absenteeism could be the result of many factors which include teachers taking up second job or farming to boost their incomes, then teachers providing parental or nursing care to their family in the absence of support systems or even the absenteeism may be because of lack of motivation also. Now when we talk about increasing the wages and salary of teachers, we have to talk about the financial inputs which is required to carry out this policy. So, the author also gives another example for this. Recently, before few months, you might have heard about the strike which was carried out by the teachers of Tamil Nadu. This strike was for the demand of increasing their wages and for better pensions. See, you should know that Tamil Nadu is one of the India's better performing states on educational indices. But the minister concerned with the issue turned down the demands of striking teachers by saying that wages, pensions, administrative costs and interest repayments already amounts to 71 percent of the state's expenditure. So, already the expenditure on education is high in the state. So, the minister asserted that very little amount is left for other developmental programs. That is why they have turned it down. So, based on the above mentioned problems, the author gives some suggestions. First, for tackling the financial problem, the author says, even though paying teachers a, a significantly higher salary may seem like a tall order or a difficult task, but uh, it can be easily addressed. For this, the central and state governments can consider rationalizing or justifying both teacher recruitment and allocation of funds to existing programs because some programs may have completed their purpose and still may be running and it requires money. So, that money can be reduced and it can be better directed to other programs so that there will be more money available for education. The author adds one more point which is improving accountability in the system because it can free up huge savings. This is due to the reason that the teachers operate in a low accountability system. Normally, a developing country education systems do not reward teachers for teaching well nor do they penalize them for not teaching. Most importantly, there is no explicit link between teacher management and student learning. Now, this teacher management is characterized by very high job security, then seniority is linked with salary increases, etc. Then in the absence of political interference, teacher promotion is based on the number of years of pre-service training formal certificates and years of service, but not on student learning. So, if accountability is increased, the performance will be high and only efficient teachers will be paid high. So, in turn, it will also increase the quality of education. The next suggestion is having a pilot project to increase wages of teachers. The author said it can be done in a smaller state such as Delhi. And also education is a key focus area for the Delhi government. Then also the state invests around 26 percent of its annual budget education sector and this 26 percent is way more than the national average. Then according to the author, the political leadership in the state is unafraid of both bold and big moves in the social sector. So, it is easy to implement a new policy in the state of Delhi. Moreover, the state is highly urban 
and well connected. So, it would be easier to enforce accountability measures. These are the reasons the author gives for choosing Delhi for the pilot project. Then finally, the author supports the move of increasing the wages of teachers by saying the investment cannot be considered too high by any society when the investment enables an educated, healthy, responsible and happy community. He also points to the OECD's another report which is named as Education at a Glance 2018 report. In this report, it mentions that the quality of education can be a strong predictor of a country's economic prosperity and shortfalls in academic achievement are extremely costly. So, the governments must find ways to compensate for the shortfalls and the government should ensure the social and economic welfare of all. Then the author concludes by saying that the government's intent on improving the quality of education should offer a step out of incrementalism in policy making. Incrementalism means believing in changes by degrees that is gradual change. So, the author wants the policy makers to opt for an immediate change rather than gradual change. Since the policies act as levers that governments use to achieve desired results in focus areas. So, improving the teacher status by offering top notch that is top grade salaries to attract the best candidate to the profession can be a revolutionary policy step forward that is required. And Bhutan has shown a willingness to take this same. That is why the author has named the article as lessons from Bhutan so that India should learn from this policy of Bhutan. With this we have come to the end of this discussion. The display practice question will be discussed in the last session. Moving on to the next discussion which is about the blue flag certification for beaches. This article discussion will be relevant in your prelim syllabus under the area current events of national importance and also under general issues on environmental ecology. The discussion will also be helpful in main syllabus in general studies paper 3 under the heading environment particularly under environmental pollution and degradation. Now, before entering into the news article discussion let us have a look at the present initiative of the government of India with respect to blue flag certification to beaches. This initiative is an integrated coastal management scheme which is named as BEAMS. BEAMS stands for beach management services. The program comes under the integrated coastal zone management project. This integrated coastal zone management project is being assisted by the World Bank. With respect to the BEAMS program, we have to know about the agency that develops the beaches under this program. The agency is Society of Integrated Coastal Management which is shortly called as SICOM. This society is established under the Ministry of Environment, Forests and Climate Change. It is SICOM that has commenced the pilot project of Blue Flag Beach program in December 2017 in India. Under this program, the Society of Integrated Coastal Management has been identifying one beach in each of all the nine coastal states and four coastal union territories of India. When we say some project or program as a pilot project, it means that the project has been introduced at a preliminary level at some locations and on a limited scale only. The purpose of pilot project is to study the challenges, possibilities, feasibilities and requirements of the program so as to take the program to the next level. If they find that the project is not feasible in the pilot project then they will stop with the pilot project alone. Hence this BEAMS is one such pilot project of SICOM where it is limited to only one beach which is situated in nine coastal states and four coastal union territories of India. This is the situation as of now. The main objective of the program is to promote sustainable development in coastal regions with respect to beach management. Also to attain high international standards in four categories of beaches. The main focus of this program is to attract domestic and international tourists. The four categories of beaches which we mentioned here are one is uh, environmental management. Uh, this includes the cleanliness factor and the solid waste management system. Then is the environment education, then safety and security of beach goers and then is the 
bathing water quality standards. Originally, the blue flag beach standards are established by an organization called as Foundation on Environmental Education, which is shortly called as FEE. This organization started its work in the year 1987. It is based at uh, Copenhagen, which is the capital of Denmark. According to this organization, in order to make the beaches environment friendly, there are 33 standards in four areas that we have already discussed. The blue flag beaches standards were initially popularized all over Europe and it was extended to other parts of the world also with uh, South Africa joining the standards in 2001. Now let's come to the news article discussion. It states that the Tamil Nadu government is searching for suitable location to develop the location under the blue flag beach program. The word scouting mentioned in the news article means searching in this context. The article states that the state government receives funds under this program from the central government. Initially, they have decided to develop Mahabalipuram beach which is situated in the Chennai city of Tamil Nadu. But since the waves currents are strong in the Mahabalipuram beach, it would not be safe for bathing requirements and other accessibility criteria. So, it has been dropped. Also, in the month of June, the Ministry of Forest, Environment and Climate Change said that the Puri beach in the state of Odisha will be the first beach in Asia to get the blue flag certification. But it has not yet got it. Let us wait and see which beach is getting the blue flag certification first. With this, we have come to the end of this article discussion. The split practice question will be discussed in the last session. Moving on to the next news article discussion which talks about the violation of reservation in higher levels of teaching at various universities. This article discussion will be relevant in your prelim syllabus under the area current events of national importance and also under social development particularly in inclusion. The discussion will also be helpful in main syllabus in general studies paper 1 under the area social empowerment and also in general studies paper 2 under the area government policies and issues arising out of their design and implementation and then also under mechanisms constituted for the protection and betterment of vulnerable sections. The authors of this article talks about an anomaly in the recruitment process of positions at higher levels of teaching in central education institutions and also in the institutions that are aided by the central government. Here the word anomaly in this context takes the meaning of irregularity or abnormality in the recruitment process. The part of the anomaly is that some central universities have arbitrarily restricted the reservation of other backward castes to the level of assistant professor only. This means that the reservation for OBC will be there only till the level of assistant professor. Then for top positions such as associate professor and professor there will not be any reservation mechanism for the candidates of other backward caste. In order to redress these irregularities, the Central Educational Institutions Reservation in Teachers Cadre Ordinance 2019 was introduced. An ordinance can be promulgated by the President when any one of the Houses of Parliament is not in session. And the ordinance can also be promulgated when both the Houses are not in session. We know that Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha are the two Houses of the Parliament. This ordinance making power of president is based according to the article 123 of the Indian constitution. An ordinance will have the same force and effect such as an act or law of the parliament. The author says that the central educational institutions ordinance provided for the reservation of scheduled castes, the scheduled tribes and the socially and educationally backward classes in direct recruitment posts in teachers cadre. This ordinance will be applicable to central educational institutions and educational institutions that are aided by the central government. The ordinance has clearly indicated that reservation to the OBCs shall be provided at all levels of teaching. But despite the ordinance, some of the recent advertisements for the teaching positions in 13 central universities are in clear violations of this ordinance. Also, a clarification was issued by the Ministry of Human Resource and Development regarding the ordinance. Even after the clarification, just only one central university issued a revised notification that provided reservation for the other backward castes at all levels of teaching. 
This indicates that the other universities have violated the ordinance because they did not even care about issuing a revised notification for the recruitment. Then the authors cite an example where the reservation was provided for the economically weaker sections who are not included in the scheduled castes or the scheduled tribes or in the other backward castes also. This was observed in the Indira Gandhi National Tribal University. This university provided reservation for EWS category at the levels of associate professor and professor also. But the same university did not provide any reservation for the candidates from the other backward caste. This is what the authors mean by the term differential treatment. Because different treatment was given to EWS category and a totally different treatment was given to OBC category. In addition to this, some other institutions also do not have any reservation with respect to higher levels of teaching positions. We can take Tata Institute of Social Sciences as an example for such a system, where there is no reservation for higher levels of teaching positions. But it is said that Tata Institute of Social Sciences is known for its commitment for social justice. Also know that the people belonging to the other backward castes constitutes around 50% of India's population. But we could see only 9.8% representation in all faculty positions in all the central education institutions. Then according to the University Grants Commission, only 13.87% of the positions at the level of assistant professor are occupied by the candidates of other backward castes. This is the scenario with respect to the central universities. From this we can say that there is inadequate representation of OBCs at the top posts of teaching in central universities. When we mean central universities, it means the institutions of higher learning where the administration and control of the particular university lies with the central government. Then the author draws the attention to one another inference that they have found with respect to the representation of OBCs in comparison with the people belonging to the Muslim religion. The representation of OBCs was less than that of Muslims at the higher levels of teaching. In OBC category, there are certain communities from Muslim religion also. The author says that if we exclude those communities from Muslim religion which are included in OBC, then if you look at the representation of OBCs in higher levels of teaching, the representation is almost negligible or very very minimal. Then the author states that the professors and associate professors play a significant role in the decision making process with respect to recruitments and at times they also misinterpret constitutional provision. The authors are referring to article 16 clause 4 of Indian constitution that says that the state shall make any provision for the reservation of appointments in favor of any backward class of citizens if they are not adequately represented in the services. We know that article 16 of Indian constitution deals with equality of opportunity in matters of public employment. Then we can also note that even when there are violations with respect to the ordinance, the courts are just asking only to make correction to the advertisement. The court neither awards compensation to the petitioner, nor it orders any punishment for the violators. The authors say that there was a noticeable delay in implementing the reservation for the scheduled castes, scheduled tribes and the other backward castes since the announcement. But for economically weaker sections, the reservation was implemented within a month of announcement. This is what the author calls as differential treatment. Finally, the authors conclude that this differential treatment will lead to imbalanced representation of a social group at the higher levels of teaching. With this, we have come to the end of this article discussion. The display practice question will be discussed in the last session. Moving on to the next discussion, which is about the core industries of India. The discussion is relevant in current events of national importance and then in economic development. It is also relevant in main syllabus under GS paper 3 in the area Indian economy. The news article states that the growth in the core sectors of economy has slowed to 5.1% in the month of May of 2019. This value is given by the index of 8 core industries. This was led by the slowing growth in the coal and refinery product sector. So the slowdown in May was uh, led by the refinery sector which saw a contraction or decline of 1.5 percent as compared with a growth of 4.3 percent in the previous month. 
Then the coal sector also saw growth slowing to 1.8 percent from 3.2 percent over the same period. Additionally, the crude oil sector witnessed a continued contraction for the 18th consecutive month in May. It was contracting around 6.96 percent in the month of May. Then the fertilizer sector also contracted in May by 1.03 percent. Whereas, the natural gas sector remained flat in May, that is it registered a zero growth. But if you see the strongest performer of the eight sectors, it was the steel sector. The steel sector grew by 19.8 percent in May, which was followed by the electricity sector. The electricity sector remained at high level as it was increased by demand in the summer months. It grew 7.23 percent in May as compared with 5.99 percent in April. Then the cement sector also witnessed a subdued growth of 2.75 percent in the month of May. So, now let us know about the index of 8 core industries. Index of 8 core industries or ICI is released on a monthly basis. The monthly ICI is a production volume index. ICI measures a collective and individual performance of production in selected 8 core industries. These 8 core industries are coal, crude oil, natural gas, petroleum refinery products, fertilizers, steel, cement and electric. It is compiled and released by the Office of Economic Advisor which functions under the Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade of Ministry of Commerce and Industry. But remember that Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade was earlier known as Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion. Then the base year of the ICI has been revised to 2011 to 2012 from 2004 to 2005. Also the combined weight of these 8 core industries is 40.27 percentage of IAP that is index of industrial production. The objective of ICI is to provide an advanced indication on the production performance of the industries of core nature that too before the release of index of industrial production which is released by central statistics office. Then ICI is important because it is an important lead indicator for overall industrial performance and also an indicator for general economic activities in the economy. Now let us know the components that are covered in these 8 industries for the purpose of compilation of index. Under coal, coal production is included which excludes coking coal. Then for crude oil industry, total crude oil production is included. Then for natural gas and refinery products also, their total production is included. Then for uh, fertilizer industry, urea, ammonium sulfate, calcium ammonium nitrate, ammonium chloride, diammonium phosphate and single superphosphate is included. Then for steel industry, production of alloy and non-alloy steel is only included. Then for the cement industry, production in large plants and mini plants are included. Then in the electricity sector, actual electricity generation of thermal, nuclear and hydro electricity generation and also imports from Bhutan is included in the compilation of index. Now you may think what is the use of this ICI? This ICI is widely used by policy makers which includes Ministry of Finance and other ministries and departments. Then it is it's used in banks financing, then it is also used in infrastructure projects, then it is used by Reserve Bank of India and Railway Board also. With this we have come to the end of this analysis. The display practice question will be discussed in the last session. Moving on to the final article discussion which is about the recent decision of the state government of Nagaland to set up the register of indigenous inhabitants of Nagaland. This article discussion will be relevant in your prelim syllabus under the area current events of national importance and then also under rights issues in Indian polity. The discussion will also be relevant in main syllabus in general studies paper 2 under the area functions and responsibilities of the states. In this article, the author shares her or his opinion about setting up of the register of indigenous inhabitants of Nagaland with a slight comparison with the present update process of NRC in the state of Assam. The author states that 
Nagaland is following the footsteps of its western neighbor that is Assam. Following the footsteps means adopting almost the same approach which is taken by Assam. That is why the title of the article is imitation registry as if Nagaland's indigenous inhabitants register making process is an imitation of the update process of national register of citizens in Assam. Also know that Nagaland shares borders with three Indian states and one neighbor country. In the west it shares border with Assam, in the north it shares border with Arunachal Pradesh and in the south it borders with Manipur and the neighboring country is Myanmar which is in the east of Nagaland. Then the author says that the Assam is yet to publish its final NRC which is a year after the process began. But we know that the update process in Assam began in 2015 and it has been 4 years since the start of the process. But the Nagaland register is expected to be set up by December this year that too within 5 months. This sounds simple and yesterday we saw that the population of Nagaland is around 19.8 lakhs according to the 2011 census. But the population of Assam is 3.12 crores that is 312 lakhs. So, the comparative less population in Nagaland would have convinced the government that the entire exercise of setting up the register could be over by 5 months. We know that the Assam update process was done to detect the illegal immigrants. So far it has seen mixed results. By mixed results the author means that the NRC update has resulted in conflicting opinions, results etc. Some sections of people want the NRC update while there are significant number of Assamese populations who do not want such exercise. There has been many news like the non-inclusion of names of genuine Indian citizens in the NRC draft. Even the names of family members of a former Indian president were missing in the draft NRC. The name of the former president of India is Mr. Fakhruddin Ali Ahmed. He was the president of India for a period of two and a half years between 1974 and 1977. Then also the Assam exercise has left the names of around 40 lakh people in the final draft of NRC. Also recently an additional draft exclusion list was published which left names of another 1 lakh people. The author says there is no clear end point for the Assam experiment. This is because no one knows what the Indian government is going to do with this approximately 41 lakh people who have been left out. The government says that they have to be deported to their country from where they came to India. In the context of Assam, the majority of the 41 lakh people would have certainly come from Bangladesh. So, in order to deport them, first the government of Bangladesh has to agree to take them back. But the Bangladesh government has in a way expressed that it will not take them back by saying that the NRC update exercise in Assam is an internal matter of India. This implies that there is no possibility of deportation. Now, similar to Assam, one of the objectives of the new register in Nagaland is also to identify the illegal immigrants from Bangladesh. Two years ago, a town in Nagaland has passed a resolution to curb or restrict the illegal Bangladeshi immigrants and to prevent them from integrating with other people in Nagaland. There were also restrictions against them to live and to carry on trading. Here the author gives a fact about Nagaland. We know that the capital of Nagaland is Kohima, but the largest city of Nagaland is Dimapur and Dimapur is also the commercial capital of the state. But for whole India, the commercial capital is Mumbai. The reason for this is that the most financial and trade related institutions will be in that particular city and uh, there will be a lot of physical activity with respect to the transactions related to commerce. Hence similar importance is there for Dimapur within the state of Nagaland. Then the author says that the situation in Nagaland is already volatile. Very recently the Ministry of Home Affairs also has extended the operation of Armed Forces Special Powers Act of 1958 and the state of Nagaland is declared as a disturbed area under section 3 of the act. Therefore, the author says that in such a situation the state government must proceed with caution. So, in no way the register setting up exercise should make an indigenous inhabitant of Nagaland as an outsider. 
that is it should not say that the individual is not an indigenous inhabitant of Nagaland and there is no clear understanding about what will happen to those who are not included in the register of indigenous inhabitants of Nagaland. The author calls for having an appeal mechanism and a humane hearing to be an inbuilt feature of Nagaland's new exercise. The NRC experiment in Assam has witnessed several extremely divisive political posturing. This we could see from the fact that there was a lot of yes and no's among political parties for NRC update in Assam. As we could find some political parties favoring a certain section of population and others supporting other sections of people. Since the developments in Nagaland will be closely observed by other northeastern states, the compilation of the registry should not be driven by emotive political factors and political favoritism. That is, political emotions should not drive the compilation process. With this, we have come to the end of our article discussion sessions. The displayed practice question will be discussed in the next session. Moving on to the last session for the day, that is the practice questions discussion session. If you look at the first question, it is about the Global Teacher Status Index of 2018. Two statements have been given. The first statement is, it is released by the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development every year. That is, Organization of uh, Economic Cooperation and Development is nothing but OECD. If you remember our discussion, we discussed that PISA, that is Program for International Student Assessment is released by OECD. But this Global Teacher Status Index 2018 is not released by OECD. It is released by an international uh, organization which is named as Varke Foundation which is headquartered in the United Kingdom. So, this statement is wrong. If you look at the second statement, it states that India has been included in 2018 index only. Now, this statement is correct because before 2018, Global Teacher Status Index was released in the year 2013 and at that time India was not included and it was included only in the year 2018 index only. So, this statement is correct. So, the correct answer to this question is option B 2 only. Now, in this second question, it has given a statement and four options have been given. The statement is, which of the following program is associated with the objective to promote sustainable development in coastal regions and also to attain high international standards in certain categories in beaches? So, we have to look for the option which works with respect to beaches. Now, we have seen in our analysis that there is a program under integrated coastal zone management project which is called as BEAMS. Uh, BEAMS stands for Beach Environment Aesthetic Management System which, which can be simply called as Beach Management Services. Now, the given statement is the objective of this program only. So, the correct answer to this question is option D BEAMS. But also know that the program ACROSS stands for Atmosphere Climate Research Modeling Observation Systems Services which comes under the Ministry of Earth Sciences and the program SWEEP stands for Systematic Voters Education and Electoral Participation Program and this program is the flagship program of Election Commission of India and then uh, Hridai stands for the Heritage City Development and Augmentation Yojana. This scheme comes under the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Now, if you look at the next question, it talks about article 123 of Indian constitution. It has given four options. We have to say which among the four options deals with article 123. Now, we know that the power of president to grant pardon to the sentence of a person is mentioned within the part of president and vice president under article 72 of Indian constitution. So, that is not a correct option. Then the power of president to consult the Supreme Court was dealt under the chapter Union Judiciary under Article 143 of Indian Constitution. So, this is also not correct. Then the President notifying certain tribes to be deemed as scheduled tribes comes under special provisions relating to certain classes under Article 342 of Indian Constitution. So, this is also incorrect. So, the correct answer to this question is option D which is the power of President to promulgate an ordinance when both or any one of the houses of parliament is not in session and it comes under article 123. Now, the next question is about the national register of citizens. The question states recently the national register of citizens is being updated in which among the following states 1 Nagaland, 2 Assam, 3 Manipur. 
we have to choose the correct answer from the code given below now uh, for the past two days we have been seeing news about nagaland and some uh, uh, register process so in a hurry please don't mark as option 1 and 2 only because we know that the nrc process is being updated in the state of assam so option 2 is correct but uh, based on recent news articles don't mark nagaland as the correct answer because Nagaland has decided to set up a register which is called as register of indigenous inhabitants of Nagaland and the Nagaland process has no connection with the update process of NRC. So here Nagaland is a wrong option it has been given only to confuse you. So the correct answer to this question is option B 2 only. Now in this next question two statements have been given and we have to choose the correct statement. Now during our analysis we have seen that the section 3 of the armed forces special powers act of 1958 allows for the governor of a state or the administrator of that union territory or the central government to declare an area of a state or union territory as a disturbed area and also the ministry of home affairs has extended the operation of uh, AFSPA that is AFSPA in Nagaland for another six months very recently. So AFSPA is in operation in Nagaland. Therefore, this makes statement 1 and statement 2 as the correct statements. So, the correct answer to this question is option C both 1 and 2 only. Now, let us see one main question based on GS paper 2. Improving the status of teaching profession by providing higher wages. Evaluate. So, we have to evaluate this statement. Now, during our analysis based on this topic we saw a detailed discussion and in that discussion we gave the example of Bhutan which has declared a new policy that gives doctors and teachers and other medical staffs in the country more wages than the civil servants. So, you can mention this example then you can also talk about the global teacher status index of 2018 and how the index has concluded that teacher wages and teacher status contribute to students performance and you can also mention India's score in this status. Then you can give some suggestions on uh, how to manage the fiscal challenges which will be tackled if the uh, wages are increased for the teachers in the profession. For that you can mention the same suggestions given by the author such as rationalizing teacher recruitment and allocation of funds to existing programs. Then you can talk about improving the accountability which is lacking in the teaching sector. Then you can talk about a pilot project which can be carried out in Delhi etc. Then you can add your own viewpoints also. With this we have come to the end of our analysis sessions. If you like the video don't forget to like, comment and share and do subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel for more updates on civil service examination preparation.